All right, hello again folks and welcome back to my channel Kujiro from Gaming in Japan here and in today's video guys I'm going to talk about anime and more specifically Record of Ragnarok which was released uh, yesterday on uh, Netflix it's uh, 12 episodes before I continue I want to say that there are going to be slight spoilers here in this video so please be aware um, as soon as this anime was released I binge watched it immediately because it was one of the most uh, one of my most anticipated titles of the year and um, I have been slightly disappointed not a lot but slightly disappointed I'm going to explain why in this video I'm going to um, do and mention all the good and bad things in the show uh, this comes from the perspective of someone who hasn't read the manga purposefully I have just binge watched the anime the whole uh, 12 episodes and uh, I don't really talk that much on my English channel about anime but uh, I am very well versed in the medium I have watched over 1000 different titles I have watched probably something like 90% of all samurai historical animes and the majority of the battle animes out there I have done anime reviews on live television in my country, so and I also speak Japanese on a pretty decent level. I'm part of a Japanese esports team, I've been a translator for many years, and I have translated the official release of uh, Death Note in my country for the first few volumes. So, um, I believe that I have some level of understanding of the mediums, and I hope if you Stick with my channel in the long term you're going to uh, be a part of the conversation about anime that I want to have here on this channel among other things of course so uh, once again there are going to be some spoilers in uh, this review here that I'm going to do in uh, this form so please be aware so guys uh, the whole idea here is that uh, you have something like a uh, tournament uh, team tournament style combat between gods and um, uh, famous humans so if you tell me if you tell me that there is a entertainment product out there it doesn't matter what it is actually where you have Lu Bu fighting with Thor I'm gonna watch it or play it or read it or be interested in in doesn't matter what shape it is so as soon as i saw the premise and what characters are going to be represented there i was immediately interested but interested but in terms of what the actual execution was in the anime um there were some rough edges so to start off uh, there is no real world building in this anime the whole the whole action takes place in this kind of like a uh, heavenly coliseum er uh, arenas that are specifically built up for every single one-on-one -on -one, uh, battle and then you have the the gods and the human representatives more spe specifically on the part of the humans they are the valkyries that are supporting the humans uh because they are the ones that are gathering the the souls of the uh, heroes on the part of it and they are bringing it up to uh, the heavens in order for them to become warriors of the gods but in this uh, story here the valkyries are taking the side of the humans in the combat because the gods every 1000 years are considering uh, consider whether or not to basically cancel humanity <laughs> and um, in uh, the uh, and like the opening of uh, Record of Ragnarok they have come to the realization, the gods, that uh, the humanity doesn't really deserve to continue existing but the Valkyries are offering uh, the, uh, the to the gods the solution to have a one-on-one -on -one team battle against the humans in order to determine the final fate and not just wipe the humanity out for good and uh, because uh, Brunhilde, which is the which is the the leader of the uh, 
human team, so to speak. She has these very crazy and interesting uh, facial expressions in the show. Uh, she offers the that solution to the gods, and gods were kind of like feeling challenged because she basically throws them. Uh, are you saying something like, are you scared to actually fight the humans? And the gods uh, got clickbaited into the team battle. And um, so this is the premise. And after that, the whole uh, uh, thing starts uh, <laughs> going out. Uh, full speed, but uh, because of the this is Aphrodite, by the way, she she is like a meme machine in this anime. She is like uh, Lady Dimitrescu in Resident Evil 8. Um, this is Adam, by the way, he's uh, super funny <laughs> also. But because there is no real world building and uh, there is no real character development. Uh, the battles themselves feel like fan service more than actual uh, anime that you care about uh, because you actually care about the characters themselves. And um, this is a problem really because uh, you don't really get attached, you, you get attached with the battles but not really with the characters. So, for example, Wu Bu, which is uh, one of my most favorite historical uh, figures ever, he's represented here as a kind of like a, a mindless brute, and uh, he doesn't really talk much. Which is, I mean, if you have played the Warrior the Musou games, he doesn't really talk uh, there either. But uh, he's uh, way more interesting. In the Musou games that he is here in uh, this uh, uh, anime record of Ragnarok. And uh, it's really a, a miss because you have all these amazing characters and the show doesn't really do much with them except uh, they're having this kind of like trollish, uh, almost YouTuber style reactions to the battles, but uh, there is no otherwise much substance behind it outside of the the, the battles themselves and uh, the character because they don't have a real backstory the the backstory is kind of like pushed in uh, in the anime episodes through the the su the supporters of the characters uh, in the arena and their reactions this is Thor, by the way. He's awesome. The first battle was the most interesting one, in my opinion. So the, the backstory of the characters is expressed through the reactions of their uh, supporting cast in the arena seats, on one hand, and with uh, uh, short, uh, separate scenes with their backstory on the other hand. But uh, for some characters, like Thor, for example, he's... Uh, Backstory is uh, represented through a very poor animation, in my opinion. The, it's uh, made kind of like an old school um, classical theater or something. Doesn't really work, in my opinion. But for Wubu, for example, the backstory is made through a regular animation, but uh, it's very bland, in my opinion. However, the, the battles themselves are very interesting. On one hand, but on the other, when you consider that there are 12 episodes in the anime, they only had uh, three one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, battles in there. Uh, you have probably s uh, can guess what they are from the uh, from the central kind of like poster. It's Wubu versus Thor, Adam versus Zeus, and. Uh, Poseidon versus one of my favorite uh, historical Japanese figures, that's uh, Sasaki Kojiro. I'm very uh, very familiar with Sasaki Kojiro. I have watched him in pretty much every single Japanese movie, anime or uh, video game. And in this production, I'm going to rate him pretty low. The, the premise there is very interesting of how they decide to portray him. I'm not going to spoil that part, but... Uh, I'm going to rate his representation here 
on the lower end uh, among something like how he was portrayed in the Fate Stay Night as the assassin class there. But uh, here, the battle with him was interesting, but his backstory was not that cool, in my opinion. Nothing like, for example, how he's represented in the Vagabond manga. There, he, Sasaki Kujiri is amazing. But um, here, probably the most disappointing fight, in my opinion, was uh, Adam versus Zeus. So, Adam himself... <laughs> Adam himself was very funny and very interesting, very cool as a fighter. But Zeus was kind of like... Uh, he reminded me of uh, Grappo or Baki where they had uh, in the latest season when uh, they had um, the Chinese tournament. Uh, they, there was the character that uh, was one of the mentors of uh, Retsu Kaiyo, Ryu Kaiyo, and uh, if you remember how Yujiro... Uh, removed his face in the show and Zeus kind of like reminds me of this archetype of the of uh, uh, the Dragon Ball uh, grandpa that was that has transformed in I forgot the name of the character uh, Master Roshi excuse me how he transformed his super buffed uh, old guy and there is a bunch of them uh, in many other productions. For example, uh, the older guy in um, Full Metal Alchemist that was like super buffed. And of course, uh, Ryu Kaiyo and Kaku Kaiyo from Grappler Baki and uh, dozens of others. But uh, here Zeus was, uh, the battle with Zeus was disappointing. His intro which was supposed to be kind of like trollish, uh, was also very disappointing in my opinion. Um, so, there are a lot of hits and miss scenes. The the first one, like I said, Thor vs. Wubu was the most amazing one. But uh, there is no other way to explain it, guys. There was a lot of missed opportunities in my opinion. Like, if you tell me that you have a production where you have all these gods fight, fighting famous uh, human warriors. Like I'll be super excited, but you have to you have to deliver with the execution. Now I haven't watched, I haven't read the manga. Excuse me. And uh, according to some of the reactions of people out there, the manga was supposed to be bad. But that's kind of like a usual phrase that people use in situations like this. So I'm not gonna take it at heart. Uh, but I'm going to suspect that uh, part of the blame, because Netflix are honestly, guys, I know there are, uh, there are a lot of controversy surrounding them, especially uh, with the, uh, the new Resident Evil uh, live movie that's going to be released, uh, featuring Lance Reddick as uh, uh, Albert Wesker and his daughters for some reason. I, I don't know why exactly they decided to go in that direction of the story anyway it doesn't matter the race of the characters with that premise but i know there are a lot of people that are kind of like on the fence and uh, consider uh, netflix to be controversial but in terms of anime guys they have brought up some of the best shows in recent years there, uh, there is absolutely no denying that uh grappler baki uh kengan ashura is amazing uh um the Battle Royale anime with the afterwards with the, um, the masks. Uh, what was it called? It is in English. I forgot the name in English. It was uh, High Tension Rising or something like that. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of uh, cool. I, I think also Be the Beginning was from Netflix. But there are a lot of cool animes from Netflix. So I would consider them. Choosing uh, Shumats no Valkyrie as a good choice on principle, but the execution, in my opinion, was uh, a little bit poor. And uh, although there, there were a lot of really, really fun and exciting moments and a lot of, like, I, I would say, meme scenes, like Her Majesty, the Queen, 
Aphrodite here and how these guys are holding up her breasts. It, it was super funny. Every scene with this character is super funny. Some of the reactions with uh, Zeus and uh, the facial expressions of um, uh, Loki and uh, uh, Brunhilde were funny, but uh, I was expecting more, to be honest. Um, in my rating, I was expecting uh, Shumatsu no Valkyrie to be somewhere, probably the best anime of the year as, in terms of expectations. But now, if I have to rate it among uh, all the other titles that have released so far in the year, I would not put it even in top three, guys. So, something, uh, for example, like Joran, Prince of Snow and Blood, uh, which was concluded recently, or Vivi for It, I Song, or even 86, uh, are way better titles than this one, in my opinion. Even Cestus is kind of like more interesting, although the animation there is also lacking, but uh, I was expecting more from uh, Record of uh, Ragnarok, to be honest. I'm going to watch the second uh, season when it's released for sure. From what I know, the manga has not been concluded yet. It's not that far off after the 12th episode uh, was concluded in the anime, but uh, I hope that in the second season they are going to um add more quality to the animations make make the background stories of the characters more like better done and have more details in them and uh, uh not be unevenly executed like it was with uh, Thor's background history versus uh Lubu's background history one was kind of like a made like in a Eliada or something and the other was one full fledged animation and uh, have pre, uh, pre please reduce the reactions of the crowd to what's going on in the screen and focus more on the actual uh, action and combat of the characters they if they have uh, made the background stories better and they have uh, reduced the, the reactions from the crowds they probably could have uh, tucked in one more uh, battle in the first season. Um, the 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 final battle that they have uh, revealed before the the season ended was uh, very interesting. It was uh, spoiler alert. It was Jack the Ripper versus Hercules. So that's gonna be super fun. I'm I can't wait to to see how it's going to unfold. But uh, Please, when you add backstories and when you have reactions, uh, make them better because otherwise the pace of the show is uh, uh, broken and it's all over the place and uh, it's a pity to have so many cool and interesting characters and uh, to have uh, like a title like this that is not performing as it was expected. So... Uh, I'm probably going to do at least one more video with uh, kind of like focusing on reviews of the battles themselves because like I said the the some parts of the battles are really interesting but they are diluted from like I said the reactions and the uneven pace of the backstories but the Wu Bu versus Thor was the most interesting Zeus was versus Adam could have been better, and Sasaki Kojiro versus Poseidon, the third battle, uh, was again. I I was expecting more there. I was specifically disappointed by the back story of Sasaki Kojiro there. So uh, yeah, I hope they do better in the next season. I want to see Loki. He's here right now. He also has a very weird facial expressions. This is uh, Christ. From uh, Valkyrie Profile, she was the bad Valkyrie in Valkyrie Profile, if you remember this JRPG title. So yeah, this was my uh, opinion on uh, Record of Ragnarok. I hope you guys liked it. And if you have any opinion and you have watched the show, uh, please share what you think down in the comment section below. I would still recommend for you to watch it nevertheless. Because there are interesting moments, but overall as a 12th episode uh, anime 
I was uh, slightly disappointed and if I have to rate it, I will give it something like 6 out of 10, 6 or 7 out of 10. Uh, for me personally, it was very interesting, but if I have to honestly share an opinion on it, I don't think it was as good as I was expecting it to be, so that's my opinion. Again, please uh, like, subscribe and share what you think down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.